Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and mostly myself here on Drunken Commentary. We are on episode 5 of Umbrella Academy. So if you've been keeping up with the episodes so far, it's been, it's been a journey. So far, none of my predictions has come true, but that's mostly because, I mean, we just don't have answers to those questions yet. I'm still... None of them have been aggressively disproven yet, so I'm still believing in them and pushing for them. But we'll see how it goes. So this is episode five, uh, entitled Number Five, which is a great name for your fifth episode. And I guess we're going to find out more about Number Five and hopefully more of this time cop business that he's been part of, because that's what we really don't know. So... Welcome back to Constant Review on Drunken Commentary, and I hope you guys are enjoying it so far because I am, but that's mostly because of, you know, the drunken nature of the commentary. You know, this implies like a huge seasonal shift, but it is Toronto, so this could just be like three weeks. This is just what like February looks like in Toronto. It looks completely fine one day and the next day is covered in snow. Completely. Completely legit. It looks like he didn't even really get that far because this is the library based off the architecture. It's funny because he's had like the old, old man makeup on and everything, but he's like, he hasn't gone very far. Wow, so I didn't expect this. This is already a weird twist for me. I assume that he, like, went to the future and then kept looking, and then within a couple days or weeks found, like, the group that he was working with, wherever, the guys who were hunting him. But it appears that he lived by himself with his mannequin girlfriend for, like, 30 years. That's pretty crazy. At least until he had gray hair, so... Maybe he wasn't working for the future guys for very long at all. Maybe it was just like a year or so. Hey guys, that's the logical problem with doing drunken commentary. But at a certain point, you realize that you're hungry. And I need to get some drunken commentary food in me. I'm like... I care about this plot line, but like, I understand what's happening in it, which makes me care so much more about what's happening with Vanya and the creeper not boyfriend, because I have no idea what's happening in that plot line. And uh, I want answers. Give me my answers. Okay, so that creates so much more questions than I think it does. So, not to dwell on more time travel stories for you guys, but in Legends of Tomorrow Season 1, they talk about Vandal Savage, who ends up taking over the world in the 2100s. So, Vandal Savage takes over the world in the 2100s, and he ends up being a huge, horrible dictator that kills off a lot of people, and the main character, Rip Hunter, ends up creating a task force and going rogue in order to try to defeat Vandal Savage so that he can't take over the world and be a horrible, evil person in the future. So, spoilers on that series, um, he later finds out that he's been trying to get his former organization, the Time Masters, to do something to stop Vandal Savage, but he can't do it. And he finds out in the end that the reason why he can't convince them to overthrow Vandal Savage is the, because if Vandal Savage hadn't taken over the world, the world would not have unified, and unification of the world was necessary in order to defeat a bigger threat, an apocalyptic threat that was coming in a couple of years. And the only thing that stopped them from being killed off by an upcoming apocalypse was the fact that... was the fact that he unified the world by taking it over. So, I 
I'm wondering if that's related to what's going on here, where by when he's talking to those time cops, they said that this needed to happen. And maybe what they mean by this need to happen is like, this is for the greater good. If you didn't blow up this city or whatever you did, something much worse is going to happen. So we'll see. And I feel like that's going to end up being plot for season two, but we'll see what, what direction this heads in. I was dealing with a huge philosophical debate and I would love to tell you what the right answer is so you guys can just, you know, bookmark it, save it, know that that's the right answer, but at the end of the day, there is no right answer. Man, will Klaus ever not break anything of paramount importance? Like, geez, threw out his dad's objects, he destroyed this briefcase. Man, stop breaking super valuable shit, Klaus. You guys ever watch Supernatural? Like, it's a good show, but the one thing I hate about it is every every time they find something that would help them a lot, like the men of letters and everything, every time they end up destroying all this knowledge that would make their lives so much easier. And I get it from the TV show perspective. We can't have their lives being too easy, otherwise it stops being a TV show. But just kills me. Like, they find this huge leap forward, and they can do so much more, and then, boom, they destroy it for reasons. I'm still a fan of Hazel. I think he might be one of my favorite characters in the show. <laughs> He's just so relatable. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's taking evil boyfriend to Pound Town soon. It seems like a terrible breakfast place. Like, it does not have a breakfast aesthetic to it at all. This is like a coffee shop. I am still so shocked that the show has not gotten into talking about the other 42 babies that were born on the same day. It feels like that would be the plot of the season, but it doesn't seem like they're going to be relevant. It seems like this season, at very least, is going to focus along the seven members of the Umbrella Academy. So maybe this is going to be the guy who destroys the world, but I don't think so. I think this has to do with Vanya. I think Vanya is a central character in the season. Whatever happens to the world is somehow going to be her... Her power is that she's suppressing with the pills, but if she used them, it would be so powerful and devastating and destroy the world. This is exactly here in season one, where the person who, I can't say it, but spoilers for season one of Heroes, the person who was going to destroy New York City was the main hero of the show, who just couldn't control his powers. I think that's what's happening here, and that's my bet. Where is Klaus right now? Like, has he not gone back to see his siblings yet? Cause I don't think he has. Yeah, I was thinking about that before too. The dog tags and then he had a, what looked like a military tap on his sh uh, shoulder. So, maybe that's why. He's just seen too much death now. He has PTSD. And... So is Pogo repairing Robomom? That's what it looks like. Which once again removes all the stakes of Robomom dying if she can just be repaired. I was right about to say, ask her out, ask her out, you dummy. And he just did. So he wins, I lose. I feel like he needs to tell his brother so he can see Ben. It basically sounds like he, they don't know. I'm sure they don't know. And he really needs to let them in on that. We'll help him heal. I'm Team Klaus. I want him to recover. Hopefully this whole veteran thing is going to do him some good.
and he'll find people who at least can help him process death. She's a bird watcher. Uh, if I was going to go watch animals, and trust me, I'm definitely the kind of person who would go out of my way to watch animals, I would not like just sit around looking for birds to come by. So. It is beautiful to go to sanctuaries and stuff to watch people who really care about animals uh, dedicating their lives to protecting them and preserving their wildlife. Also, have I mentioned that I love Hazel? I'm disappointed that his name isn't Chacha, but I do love Hazel. He, he's an endearing character. That's sad. One of his uh, army mates. One of his personal privates, if you will. Oh, they're so kidnapping him. So there's the innate math major in me that wants to really break down all the math that's on the walls. But I can tell just from a brief look through that half of it is completely irrelevant. Um, there's just integral graphs on the wall. There's the definition of an integral over there. And basically all this math nonsense like it usually is in movies. But... <laughs> oh man, it's my favorite ultimatum of all time. She is not doing as well in this scene. I think this shows real craft to excellence is that I really do care about a couple characters. Like, I care about their relationship. I care about Hazel and Cha Cha. I also care about. I cared about Diego and the detective, who I don't remember the name of. And now I'm really getting into Allison and Vanya. And I care about Klaus' recovery. I can believe that he's going to be a great guy once he recovers. So, we're going to find out. And. The journey is part of the experience. <laughs> oh, classic. Called it. I mean, called it. For how long? Like, she's clearly doing something with her music. And... Called it, that's all I can say. And it's because she's being offered drugs for this long. I mean, I liked it, but clearly, I also like the fact that I was clearly right about her having superpowers, which I don't think was hidden at, at all. I mean, you've lived a long life, but you haven't exactly lived a fulfilling life. You basically were just a hermit with the man. Well, this is very The Matrix, the fact that they can call their superiors from seemingly any landline. The ice cream truck playing Ride of the Valkyries. That's ominous. I feel like it's not going to be superiors, it's going to end up being like Klaus or something. Yep, called it. This is going to be the handler, because it's a time power and it's not his time power. So it has to be from the guys who have this kind of time power. So it's going to be the handler chick. Move the bullet, damn it. I haven't seen a lot of the feeble since the simple Rex one in uh, the Citadel episode. He's gonna move the bullet. Move the bullet, damn it. There we go. Have they not realized yet that the briefcase is fake? Okay, 
she just trusts this dude way too much. Like, I, I feel like you guys are thinking that I'm going back and forth on my opinion a lot, and I'm really not. I think there's a reasonable amount to how much he should trust, she should trust him, and she is just trusting him too much, and her sister is trusting him too little. And they're gonna hook up. But he's evil, Vanya. Pay attention. Interesting. It's gonna be like a weird shrine to Vanya up top. What the hell? Do we know that guy? But I still have no idea what her power is. I thought it had something to do with music because it happened kind of when she was playing at that last performance. But right now she appears to be doing it while getting busy. So no idea. I am very confused. I am very confused. I feel like none of my questions have been answered. I'm glad to know that uh, Vanya has powers. That's a good, I feel like, called it. But I still have no idea what those powers are. I'm still tentatively sticking with my, with my theory that Vanya is gonna end up destroying the world. But, I mean, we'll see, it's really interesting. And I, I don't know, I thought the violin was a big thing, but we didn't see much of the violin this episode. Maybe that's just her motivation? I don't know. We're going to find out. Anyways, so that, everyone, was episode five, number five. And we're going to pick it up again on episode six. Uh, see you there.